Good morning, everybody. Today is Saturday, February 23rd. It's going to be a gorgeous day today. Right now on the front side of my yard, it's about minus 2 to minus 3. It's 11.45 a.m. and on the south side of my house, in my little portable greenhouse, it's plus 32. As promised, today I will be giving a tour of my portable greenhouse. I built this greenhouse in November of 2010. It's a four foot by eight foot structure. It holds, uh, I don't know if you can see, it holds eight flats on each side. We usually put vegetables on one side and flowers on the other. Here you can see one half and the eight flats. Also part of this greenhouse, I have a portable heater I bought from Coframo. They're a Canadian company. It's a flat heater, it sits sits good so that it won't tip over when I'm wheeling the thing around. Also in my greenhouse I keep a fan, it toughens up the plants. I turn it on for maybe a couple of hours a day, it keeps the plants a little more robust. I've painted the floor of the greenhouse black to absorb sunlight. Uh, we keep this in our garage all year long and so could you I guess if you had a double garage and, and you wanted to imagine it just as an oversized single garage. If you can get over that then having something like this shouldn't be a problem. Of course you just have to decide who gets to park inside. Another feature of this greenhouse is that we have storage underneath. A couple of doors that open up here. So inside you can see the usual paraphernalia of a gardener. We keep our seed trays in there. That's some micro mesh netting for cabbage moss I'm going to try out. Got a watering can. The construction is uh, half inch thick plywood on the sides and it's 2 by 3 framing. I could have used 2 by 4 but I wanted to try and keep this thing a little bit light. It's heavy enough as it is. Get a little closer inside here. I use these uh, metal clips. I could frame it conventionally with uh, 2 by 4s the way you'd frame a house but I find that these clips uh, again help keep the weight down on this thing. Also you can see some styrofoam. I put styrofoam underneath it helps keep the heat at least in on one side of the greenhouse and running through there is an electrical cord that I use to keep my heater powered. I kept the styrofoam pinned to the top I guess with these little one by two pieces of lumber. Anyway, here's a shot of it from the street. I probably won't fire this thing up till about mid-March, weather depending. It can still get 30 below this time of the year and I have no intention of trying to heat that thing when it's 30 below. When I do fire it up, typically I put a cardboard spacer in and I only heat up half of it. Of course, a big advantage of this thing is you can wheel it in the garage when the weather turns cold and I guess if I really had to, I could use some fluorescent lights. Otherwise, what I do is I wheel it out in the morning when I go to work and I wheel it back in uh, in the evening when it gets dark out and when the weather is colder of course at night. So in March when it's like 15 below at night of course it's uh, not gobbling up the power in the garage of course the garage is above zero at least and uh, the tires I bought those tires at Princess Auto you can also get tires that are actually a little bit better quality they're more money at a place called Castor Town these tires are rated for 350 pounds each. I bought two swivel tires and I also bought two fixed tires. I uh, was thinking about buying all four swivel tires but my pet peeve I guess is trying to wheel something in and it gets going crossways and you can't get it going in the direction you want. The tires are mounted to 2x6 lumber which then the bottom sheet of plywood, a 3 quarter inch thick piece is bolted too. I'm thinking these tires were about 60 bucks a piece. I think they were about 70 at Castor Town. The Castor Town tires look like a little better quality but I opted to go for these ones. Okay so the top part of the greenhouse is made out of 2x2 two two lumber. I guess you could have used pressure treated if you like. I just went with the standard. I originally wanted to use piano hinge for this but it's a quarter of an inch thick and I find that piano hinge wasn't big enough for this so I just used four regular hinges. 
So these are just three and a half inch hinges and I put four on each side. This is quarter inch polycarbonate panel. It was about 70 bucks a sheet for a four by 10 sheet. I could have built this thing with two sheets. I opted to buy three and I'll show you how you could do it with two. This is about the equivalent of one sheet and of course it would be the same for the other side. And the links are 10 feet long so you could use the other two feet for this. At two feet actually comes up to about here. So basically I bought an extra sheet for this amount of material so you don't really have to. It comes equipped with handles on both sides for dragging it around the yard. Another addition to this greenhouse which I got last year which makes life a little easier trying to regulate the temperature is I put one on each side of these automatic uh, uh, openers for greenhouses. You can buy them at Lee Valley. I think they were about $50 each and I'll show you how they work. Okay, so each one of these things has a cylinder and in the cylinder is a compressed gas. You can tighten the cylinder and set your temperature accordingly. If you want your greenhouse to open up sooner, you would adjust the knob clockwise until you feel tension on it. Let me hook it up and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so the tighter you tighten the knob, the more you compress the gas and the easier it is for the thing to open the door. So right now, Let's see, the greenhouse got it at less than plus 10. So you can have your greenhouse quite cold if you want. Now if you want your greenhouse warmer, you simply back the knob off. And you can actually have it shut. So what I do is I like to have it say I want it at plus 20. I will adjust the knob so that it just starts to get pressure. You see it holding the door open, it gets pressure and then when it cools off it closes and when it warms up it opens. This might be a better view of how I connect these cylinders to the sides. I don't know whether you can see this. This is just a, a, some of the hardware that came with it. Again, I bought wing nuts for it. Um, it comes with a plastic plate. I use these wing nuts. I push the screws through the polycarbonate, I put this plate on over the outside of the polycarbonate and then I put the wing nuts back on. So anyways, I keep these cylinders connected when it's colder outside. When it's warmer outside I'll disconnect them and I'll just leave the sides uh, open either partially open like that on one side or on two sides depending on the wind or wide open on one side and or two sides depending on the temperature and wind. You see quite a bit of this hardware in the greenhouse section. Again, I use it for the same reason. It keeps the thing light instead of framing it conventionally and it lets more light in. Obviously if you had all that extra wood it would block your sunlight. This is just a bolt I run through and it goes through uh, the polycarbonate sheet and then I just put a wing nut on each side it keeps the wind from ripping it open Originally, I was going to use these screws. I don't know if you can see this. These are sheet sheet metal screws I was going to use these to put the polycarbonate paneling on but I found that it squashed the the polycarbonate to nothing before the rubber would compress I wasn't too worried about any rainwater leaking in so I just decided to use normal screws and I uh, used uh, these nickel plated grommets here to kind of help disperse the pressure of the screw onto the polycarbonate. And here you can see uh, just a normal metal screw with the grommet in place. Here's an end view of the unit. Um, the angle of the roof was determined actually by my chop saw. I found a, that the chop saw locked in nicely in a particular location so instead of having to guess and try and reset the angle all the time I, th I think the angle is probably 22 and a half. I couldn't tell you but I did find the angle that the chop saw seemed to like and that's what I used for the pitch of the roof. And the overall height I guess is about 28 and 3 quarters. That's right from the base, the top of the wooden section to the top of the greenhouse section. Again, now I'm not a carpenter. Here's what I did for the roof peak. I used this this fancy little hardware connector to butt the two together. And then I used the uh, corner connectors. I don't know if you can see what I did down on the other end. 
here's my framing. I don't know whether you can see this, it's difficult to show. This horizontal runner, I angled it up so that the roof uh, screws to it flat. You can see it's turned up at a, whatever, a 22 and a half degree angle. And then I butted the other one straight on. And then of course I used the hardware here to hold up the bottom, so. I bought like 70 of these these angle braces, but in my opinion, they're worth uh, every penny. They were like 75 cents each or something, but they sure they sure helped out and made the project simpler. Here's a bottom corner. You can see why it's easy to use up 70 of these. Uh, it was probably more than 70. It was maybe 80. I don't know. So the top is light like popcorn and in the fall we like to take it off and we use it to dry onions and also to ripen our tomatoes. You can see there's a lip, about a two inch lip to stop things from falling out. We like to drape the onions over the sides and then put the tomatoes in the middle for ripening in the garage. So that's what it looks like with the greenhouse topper removed. Anyway, here's a shot of the roof while I've got the thing laying on the floor. You can see I've got the two runners about six inches from the peak. And I got nothing holding the peak together. And it's strong enough. It, it's held snow before. I guess it doesn't really have to hold anything for weight. You can see the sides are opened right up. And here's what it looks like with the sides folded down. And by the time the weather warms up in mid-May, uh, most of the time the sides are wide open and the wind just whistles through there and and by the time you're ready to put things out in the garden they're toughened up they've already been receiving sunlight instead of artificial light and natural wind so they're fully hardened and ready to go into the garden I was kind of pressed for time when I built this thing my original plan was to use or try and find something with bigger tires. The biggest disadvantage I find with this thing is that it's too heavy for the tires. Originally the plan was for bicycle size type tires. What I wanted was to have two large diameter tires on one end of the unit and then stiff legs on the other end so that you would wheel it around like a cart. And instead of the little handles I wanted to have a big bar. Uh, to hold on to off the opposite end. So again, if you're gonna build something like this, I would highly recommend using uh, larger tires. If you could lay your hands on, on an old small utility trailer and uh, go from there. One of the ways I could have cut down the weight on this thing is the top level where the, where the flats, the seed trays sit is 5 8 plywood. I guess I could have made that half inch plywood. The sides of the whole thing is is half inch plywood, I perhaps could have used 3 8 but in the grand scheme of things that's not going to reduce the weight that much. I think the advantage would be better had instead of reducing the weight of the materials building it would be uh, to incorporate a chassis with larger tires. Anyway that's going to do it. In my next video I guess what I'll do is give a very brief tour of my cold room and its contents. I'll talk about two types of squash I grew and uh, I'll uh, show how I cook spaghetti squash. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, everybody.